This is going to be Job chapter 2, and we're back on the series about a man in the land of Uz. Job is a real man, a real man in the land of Uz. But how old is Job at this time? Now, we can't be exactly sure, but we can consider some facts about him, if you think about it. The first one is his children were old enough to have their own house in Job 1, 4, and 13. So he's got kids that are old enough to have their own house. So that puts us in an age range there. And then remember that in Job 32, Elihu refers to Job as aged. So he's aged. He's, he's got kids that are old enough to have their own house. He's called aged. And then consider something else in Job 42, 16. If you look at Job 42, 16, it says, After this lived Job 140 years. So Job lives another 140 years after being persecuted by the devil. And that, the fact that he lives another 140 years after being as old as he already is, that's another proof that Job was living in the time period that you read about in the book of Genesis, when men had much longer lives. Another thing, Abraham is called old and stricken in age at the age of 99. So he was aged. He's called that at the age of 99. So it wouldn't be a stretch at all to say that Job could be 75 to 100 years old at the time of his persecution so Job is an old man who has much wisdom, much knowledge and understanding. He could have been married to his wife for many years already. But put yourself in the shoes of Job's wife, who has also lost everything. And the only human, the only other human she could go to for comfort was Job. However, Job was in a world of hurt. So this is going to be called Remember Job's Wife. In the context of the future time of Jacob's trouble, what we call the tribulation, and we read about it in Luke 16, in the context of it being about the future time of Jacob's trouble, Jesus says this phrase. He says, Remember Lot's wife. So Lot's wife, you remember her, she looked back at Sodom, and turned into a pillar of salt. And that's a picture of a saint who looks back at the world because it's become so sweet to them. But since Job pictures a saint in the tribulation as well, I'm going to title this, Remember Job's Wife. You know, the Lord said, Remember Lot's wife. I think we should remember Job's wife as well. In a sense, the things of the world meant a little more to her than they should, just like it does for us many times. And this causes her to fall right into the devil's trap. But remember, Job's, Job's wife. Job's wife wasn't considering what was going on in the spirit world. Look at Job 2, 1 and 2. It says, Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. Once again, Satan and the sons of God, Satan, Satan's angels, are approaching the Lord for permission slips. So the Lord asked the devil, Where have you been? The devil's the son of God himself. He was a direct creation from God. He wasn't an angel, exactly, but an, the anointed cherub. He just appears as, as an angel of light. You see, he rebelled, but he still has to ask Daddy, the Lord God, for permission to do anything. So the Lord asked the devil, where have you been? And, you know, once again, Satan is walking to and fro. And it seems like in the tri Great Tribulation, it seems the Lord will be giving out a lot of these permission slips and lengthening the leash of the devil and unclean spirits because all hell is going to break loose on the earth 
But once again, you know, Satan, he's just walking to and fro. And you can tell he's going to have a, a great influence in the time of great tribulation that's to come because he walks to and fro. And according to Daniel in Daniel 12, 4, look what men are going to be doing in Daniel 12, 4. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. You see, the devil runs to and fro. He's going to have men running to and fro. Just like Eve wanted some knowledge when she ate off the tree, the devil and unclean spirits will give men the knowledge that they've been wanting. Men shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. So Satan and the sons of God, they're up there in heaven asking for permission to attack somebody else. And all this is taking place in heaven while Job and his wife are suffering the dev devastation of the last catastrophe that just took place in their life on the earth. And I'm not sure how much time has passed, but after losing 10 children and all the things that they lost, I doubt you would ever get over the grief. But Job has stayed spiritually minded. He hasn't cursed God with his lips. His wife, on the other hand, is ready to do so. She isn't keeping in mind that God is holy and that whatever he says and allows and does shows no sin on his part. She's forgetting that. She's not considering the spirit world, what's taking place, you know, in the spirit world. She's forgot, you know, this could be the devil and unclean spirits that are attacking me in my family. In Job 2, 3, it says, And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? And still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. Notice the Lord said to the devil, Thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. Now, it was Satan that was killing his children. It was the devil that was getting into people, causing him to steal his cattle and do all these other bad things to Job. But you see, since God is allowing it to happen, it's as if God is destroying him himself without cause. And see, sometimes the, the, the Lord uses the devil as a weapon or... They work so close together that you can't tell them apart. You see, the devil is the Lord's puppet, and he's the puppet master. Anything that the devil does, it's caused the Lord allowed him to do it, or told him to do it. And see, he's allowing this to take place in Job's life, because obviously it's going to make Job better. Obviously it's going to give us millions and millions and billions of saints throughout time the example and make us be able to learn from the patience of Job. And I'm sure Job up in heaven now, I'm sure he glad that he went through it. But it says, the Lord said to the devil, thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. But remember Job's wife. Remember Job's wife. She wasn't considering the spirit world. Maybe if you are under attack and you got everything falling out from under you and you can't figure out why have you considered it could be the spirit world the spiritual wickedness in high places remember that we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places so remember job's wife who forgot about that remember job's wife when you see the torment of a spouse Imagine being Job's wife and having to watch your husband go through all this pain and agony. And this on top of having already lost your children and everything that you had. And if you're homeless and spouseless and childless, that can be lonely. But you have a lot less to lose. When you have everything that Job, Job had, you have a lot to lose. And it can make things be even more devastating. The, the devil's got a lot more to use against you when you have so much. The thing about Job is that he wasn't serving God just because he had all this stuff and that just because he was blessed materially. He was serving God because he was an upright man. 
but the devil being fallible simply thought that Job only served God because of the many blessings that he had. But that wasn't why Job was serving God at all. But remember Job's wife. When you see the torment of a spouse, look what it says in Job 2, 4. It says, And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin. Yea, all that a man hath will he give for his Yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. But put forth thine hand now, and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. So the devil believes that a man will crumble and cave more over physical pain to his own flesh than over the loss of material possessions and his loved ones. Pretty much what he's saying is, God, if you put your hand now to Job's flesh and make him feel physical pain, then he's going to crumble more under that type of thing than he did the death of his own children. And for the most many times, and probably most times, that's true for most men. However, the devil had not considered the Lord's servant Job. You, and you see, you need to remember Job's wife. When one day maybe your spouse is going through something like the torments of Job on their physical flesh, it can be easy to be overtaken by the devil and by unclean spirits. It can be easy to say, you know, why does this have to be me? But who are we to question God? And at the same time, when we see someone going through what Job's wife went through, you need to remember it could be you. And you could do worse than she did. You could commit a greater sin than she did. Galatians 6, 1 says, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. You could go through the same thing as somebody else and come out a lot worse. So remember Job's wife when you go through seeing the torment of a spouse. And remember Job's wife and the influence of Satan. In Job 2, 6, it says, And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. So Job's flesh is about to become the possession of the devil. And notice how Paul shows us that Satan can possess our flesh. In 1 Corinthians 5, 5, Paul talks about delivering a guy unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh. <clears throat> So, if you're turn, turned over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, your flesh becomes his possession. And that's what's going on with Job. The devil will now afflict the flesh of Job and at the same time get in the mind of Job's wife. And there is one restriction placed on the devil by the Lord. The devil got the permission slip, but there was some fine print on there. It says, you can't kill him. You can't kill Job. Satan could kill him if he had permission because he had the power of death, according to Hebrews 2.14. You see, the devil could do a lot more to you than he does. He just doesn't have permission. But he had permission to attack Job's flesh. Obviously, he had permission to get into the mind of Job's wife and influence her. In Job 2.7, it says, So went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job, with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. Notice the devil left the presence of the Lord. And I believe this proves he was actually in the third heaven with the Lord, sitting right in front of him. And you see, the Lord is omnipresent. We know that. He's everywhere at once. So Satan only left the presence of the Lord in the sense that he was no longer standing in front of him in the third heaven. So the devil smites Job with sore boils. And remember that the book of Job shows us flashes of the tribulation time period. It's a picture of that. And do you know what happens to men who take the mark of the beast in the tribulation? Revelation 16, 2 says, And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and on them which worshipped his image. So, so the men who take the mark in the trib... They get a sore on them. What's one of the first things the devil does to Job? He puts sore boils on him. What happened to the Egyptians during the plagues? They got 
boils all over them. In Exodus 9, 10 through 11, that pictures the trib. But Job is a righteous man going through the torment that a wicked man is going to face in the tribulation. Not only does he have physical pain, but he has his wife who is under the influence of the devil. She's not giving him any comfort. And his wife has no comfort because her husband's going through all this physical pain. He's unable to comfort her. So it's like Satan's got Job's body and he's got the wife's mind. And Job 2, 7, So went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. So everywhere you looked on Job, he's got all these sores all over him. And his wife's not helping him none. She's just being even more of a dis discourager. And she can't even come sit next to him and comfort him. Because she has this mindset of it's all over. This is the end. This is the end of the world. And you see, the devil was the top dog at one time. The Lord had made him king over the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. And he rebelled and God took his crown. And the Lord then gave the crown to Adam. In Psalm 8, 4 and 5, it says, What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. I just, I think it's significant that the boils on Job went all the way up to his crown. And I, were not, I know this is referring to the top of his head, but at the same time it reveals something else. The devil was trying to prove something. Trying to say, you know, Job's got nothing on me. I'll strike him with boils from the sole of his foot all the way up to his crown. The devil has been knocking the crown off of men since Adam and Eve were created. And he believes Job would be just another king to add to the list of victims. You see, the Bible is about king and kingdoms. It's about somebody wanting the throne. And see, Job was the main guy on earth at this time. The one that was perfect and upright. The one that God picked out of everybody to say, Hey, devil, have you considered this man? The devil wants to be the best so that he can be the best. The devil is going to use all the tricks to get Job to sin. This even includes getting in the mind of his wife and using her against him. And Job's wife doesn't consider that she could be influenced by the devil. You need to consider that you could be influenced by the devil, by the things that you say. Job 2.8 says, And he took him a potsherd to scrape himself with all, and sat down among the ashes. A pot shirt is a p broken piece of pottery. And he's going to use it to scrape those boils off and to get the pus out of the sores. Maybe even use it as a good back scratcher. But he sat down among the ashes. And this shows he is in great mourning. Job is going through all this mental and physical pain. Now the devil will enter the mouth of the person that he loves most to kick him while he's down. And Job 2, 9, it says, Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. She's thinking, Do you still believe God is on your side? How could he, how could he be on your side? Look, look what's happened to you. Why don't you just go ahead and curse God and die, Job? You see, in her defense, in his wife's defense, she just lost everything she had. And now her husband looks like literal death. And she doesn't realize that she's playing right into the hands of the devil. The devil has his had his predictions earlier in the chapter when he said in Job 2, 5, put forth thine hand now and touch his bone and his flesh and he will curse thee to thy face. So what is it that the wife comes? She comes and says to Job to curse God and die. And the devil's pred prediction for Job was that he would curse God to his face. The devil believed that if he was allowed to touch Job's flesh and put physical pain on him, that Job would curse God to his face. So, who do you think's influencing Job's wife here? Obviously, the devil. Remember Job's wife when your spouse or loved one is going through the pains of life. Don't say anything that might seem like a kick while they're down. You could be playing right into the hands of the devil. 
Job 2.10 says, But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? And all this to Job did not Job sin with his lips. Job says that his wife is speaking as one of the foolish women speaketh, which shows that Job knew that she wasn't one of those foolish women, but in the time of distress, she was just speaking like one. In the time of this distress, she was acting like a foolish woman. And in Psalm 14, 1, it says, The fool has said in his heart that there is no God. The fool has no heart for God because they don't believe in him. That is the atheist. Another fool has no heart for God because he doesn't believe in him. Believe in him in the sense of he doesn't believe that he's going to do anything for him. He isn't an atheist, but he doesn't believe God cares or will come through. Or that he is just, you know, walking around, doesn't care about his creation. So when things go wrong, he has no problem cursing God. The atheist has no problem cursing God. He doesn't believe in in God in the sense he doesn't even believe he exists. Another guy believes in God, but he's a fool because he doesn't believe that he will do does anything for man or that he cares for man. And maybe during this time, Job's wife didn't think God cared about anybody. And in Job 2.10 it says, But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? You see, we have received plenty of good from the hand of God. He maketh the sun to rise on the evil and the good, Matthew 5.45 says. He has given us food and raiment. Let's be content with that. 1 Timothy 6.8 says, Godliness with contentment is a great gain. It says, Let's be content with food and raiment. Let us be there with content. When the Lord allows evil to happen to you, don't curse God and die. Think to yourself, It's about time. I've received good at the hand of God. Shall I not receive evil? You know, do I deserve all this good? How do I deserve all this good and not deserve something bad to happen to me? You see, God has already given me infinite times more than I deserve and kept back infinite times more evil that I do deserve. He's kept me from those things. It's about time I receive something bad on my life. That should be your attitude. The best thing to do in a situation like Job's is to say, Lord, I deserve much worse, but please help me. And the chapter closes out with the introduction to Job's three friends. In Job 2.11, it says, Now when Job's three friends heard of all this evil that was come upon him, they came every one from his own place, Eliphaz the Temanite, and Bildad the Shuhite, and Zophar the Namathite, for they had made an appointment together to come to mourn with him and to comfort him. Romans 12, 15 says, Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. That's what they was coming to do, to weep with Job as he wept. In Ecclesiastes 7, 2, it says, It is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting. You see, they could have been somewhere else, but they came to be with Job and to mourn. And in Job 2, 12, it says, And when they lifted up their eyes afar off and knew him not, they lifted up their voice and wept, and they rent every one his mantle and sprinkled dust upon their heads toward heaven. Job was covered in boils and in such rough shape that they knew him not. Job also pictures Jesus Christ on the cross. It says about Jesus that in Isaiah fifty two fourteen it says, As many were astonied at thee, his visage was so marred more than any man. You see, when Jesus was on the cross, Jesus was so bloodied and tortured that you wouldn't be able to tell who he was on the cross. Job's three friends lifted up their voices and wept. And this shows they are in grief for Job, even though later it seems they are against him. It says they rent everyone his mantle. This picture is being ready for death. Because naked came out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. Then they sprinkled dust on their heads. This picture's a burial. And so they sat down with him upon the ground seven days and seven nights, and none spake a word unto him, for they saw that his grief was very great. See, they sat down with him. They got down in the ashes, ashes just like they were the ones going through it. And they stayed with Job seven days and seven nights, you know, picturing the tribulation. Seven days and seven nights. And I mean, the picture doesn't match perfectly because 
Job's already gone through a bunch of tribulation. But I think it's significant that they sat down with him seven days and seven nights, and you got a seven-year tribulation. But Job's three friends will eventually seem like enemies. But at least they cared enough for Job to stay with them. And, you know, where was Job's wife at this time? Seems like she just said, curse God and die, and then went off somewhere. But Job's three friends didn't speak a word at this time. They just sit there with him. They were just there. Sometimes you don't have to say nothing. You can just be there for somebody. But Job's wife shouldn't have spoke the word. She should have just been there. She shouldn't have said, curse God and die. She should have just sit down among the ashes with Job. I mean, when you're going through that hard of a time, at least you can go through it together and you have each other's company. You have each other's presence. When you're going through a horrible time or tragedy in your life, if you've still got a family member left, rejoice in the fact that you still got that person left. Job's wife, she shouldn't have spoke those words. But remember Job's wife. Sometimes you can't say any words to help someone, but you could easily say words that could make matters worse. So when you go to be with somebody or speak to somebody that's going through a horrible time, remember Job's wife. Don't say something to somebody that's going to kick them while they're down. 